I hope everyone is enjoying Xenoblade Chronicles 2 so far and it is my hope that this video will make your adventures going forward a little easier. I'm not going to pretend this is the hands down best way to farm gold, I'm sure there are other ways out there, but this is super easy, super quick and doesn't involve any tedious fast travelling or time resetting or anything like that. But before we jump on in, I wanted to share the semi related reason I was forced into getting a whole lot of gold. It's a rare blade, a rare blade I am dubbing the money sink because that is what Sheba is, a huge damn money sink. So here's a quick rundown on how to get her and why she costs so damn much gold. First up in Gormot, you are going to notice a vendor named Kasa. After you finish the initial questline in Torigoth, he will have only two items for sale, and one of them is an inherited core crystal that he is selling for the low, low price of 500,000 gold. This core crystal is guaranteed to summon Sheba, and it is the only way to get her. You will notice though that 500,000 gold is far from where it ends. To level up her affinity tiers, you need to deposit a whole lot of gold into her piggy bank in Argentum. The first tier will set you back 200,000, and when all is said and done, it will cost a cool million gold. And even that isn't where it ends. But before we go to Argentum, once you've summoned Sheba, set her as your active blade and talk to the vendor you bought her from. A short scene will play and you will actually be given 250,000 gold back, which is a good start to the piggy bank. Now in Argentum, to get access to her piggy bank, you are going to need access to the warehouse, which is likely going to set you back even more gold. A Nopon will be guarding the front of the warehouse and to get in you'll have to pay him 100,000 gold. Or if you refuse the first time he will give you a generous discount of 1 gold and it will only cost you a mere 99,999 gold. There is also a back door where you can get in for free, assuming that you have the right field skills, but it requires something like level 4 knop on wisdom and level 4 lock picking, which isn't the easiest combo, especially earlier in the game. Regardless of how you get into the warehouse, you'll see Sheba's piggy bank right in the middle and all your hard earned cash is going to need to be dropped in to max her affinity chart. So how have I been making the gold to do all this? Salvaging. Salvaging in Torigoth to be exact. First, head over to the salvage vendor and buy up a bunch of cylinders. This is going to be most useful once you've unlocked golden cylinders, but you will still make some money with silver. I wouldn't recommend using normals though. I'll use 10 this time, and since Gormot is maxed for me, they only cost 5,000 gold each, at a total cost of 50,000 gold. Now all you do is head over to the Seat Chief's residence salvage point just around the corner, and start salvaging. 10 cylinders took me roughly 6.5 minutes. The monsters that occasionally spawn from this point are really low level, so you should be able to one shot or at least take care of them quickly so it's a not waste time. The plus side is that they'll drop core crystals pretty regularly. Once you're done salvaging, head back around to the vendors and you want to speak to Lin at the Mass Natch Exchange. Ignore the first two, the Snow Spring and Spiral Art, they don't pay much. Just head down and start selling everything that isn't greyed out. Ancient Majesty is worth almost 13,000 and as well as a bunch of others, one is worth almost 20,000. Sell up all your stuff and you will be way ahead. In this particular case, I made a net gain of 80,000 gold after factoring in the 50,000 for the cylinders, but the time just before before this recording I made 150,000 gold from 10 golden cylinders, and you can see why. I am only a material or two off a couple of the exchanges that would have added a few more 15 and 20,000 gold payouts. You can basically rinse and repeat this until you have the amount of gold you want, and it's super quick. As I say, 6.5 minutes for 10 cylinders and that's 80,000 gold at a minimum basically, and the good thing that doing these exchanges is it levels up the star rating for Gormot. And as I said earlier, at 5 stars, the cylinders only cost 5,000 gold. In a perfect world, you could be making somewhere around 9 million gold per hour, but there is one little hitch. These exchanges also give you boosters, and once you've reached capacity on those, you'll either have to use them in core crystal summons, or sell them to a vendor nearby. Your booster inventory gets increased later on in the game with the help of an item, so my limit for each booster is 15 rather than 5, so you don't need to dump your boosters so often down the track. 
And that's about all really. This Gormot salvaging route has been the quickest and most convenient for me. The exchange vendor has a wide variety of trades. The vendors and the salvage point are really close together. The salvage point monster spawns are super low level and the salvage point also has a static and easy to pull off quick time event. It is always A, A, B. That's all from me now guys, leave a comment, hit the like button, check out the links in the description and I'll see you all soon.